Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get started on that, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for growing my channel so amazingly. And thank you for the friendship that we've developed through the comments. I really do enjoy it, and I'm thankful for every single viewer. So thank you very much. I have a number of items on today's list. The first one is an article about, well, the title of the article is Russian Deserters Become Fodder for a Gruesome Training Lesson. I, I've got this up on the screen, but I am not going to read this to you. It is really disturbing. Um, a, a Russian deserter uh, described some episodes where deserters who were captured were tortured and had limbs cut off and, and various really gruesome injuries applied to their bodies so that the medics could work on them to learn how to take care of soldiers in the field. But that's not the reason I want to show you this article. I'm going to put the link in the description and you're welcome to read the whole thing if you like. But I just want to highlight this last part. This article is written by Admiral Zumwalt, who, uh, if you know anything about the history of America, his father was an admiral during World War II and he served as an admiral during the Vietnam War. And he writes this at the end of his article. America has been a leader in breaking barriers that have de denied citizens a level playing field. That is the bond that should be tie us all together as we pursue that more perfect union. Those who denigrate our country, our flag, and our national anthem need to wake up to the reality that their actions do nothing to help us there. They need to wake up to the reality they are truly blessed to be able to call America home. Yeah. <clears throat> Learning what R Russians are doing to their deserters. I mean, during World War II, if you deserted from the American army, you were just shot. You were executed. But what the Russians are doing is far, far worse than that. It's, it's terrible. And too many people in America have been desensitized to what goes on in the world. And they think that everything that happens in America is terrible, but they have no idea what it's like in any other countries. And there are places in the world today where some of the people that are in America would be put to death simply for being who they are. People need to learn that thankfulness goes a long way. And that looking for the good side of things is beneficial to everyone. I'm not saying we shouldn't criticize our country. We should. There's plenty wrong with America, which I will point out a little later in this episode. <clears throat> but you, you can't throw out the baby with the bathwater. The next article I have, the title is Meet the AI Censored. Naked Capitalism is the name of a magazine that writes about economics, and it's a very popular online magazine. Google provides an early scary test case for mechanized suppression by threatening a popular economic site with demonetization. That is the power that the big tech companies have over people who use their services is at any time they can threaten to demonetize you. And if you're dependent upon that income, that's terrifying and that will make you cave in and that will make you toe their line. If you read this story, you'll find out that their AI system flagged six articles over a two year period that they 
claim are unacceptable. And if you look at the details, the articles weren't even about what they were flagged for. It's really troubling that this can happen. And I can't help but think that entrepreneurs in America and around the world are going to come up with other ways to get around this stuff to allow people like this magazine, which I know nothing about. I've never read them, but I understand that they're, they're a very well-respected magazine on economics. <clears throat> to allow them to continue to do their work without interference from a all-seeing eye, let's call it, from a 1984 organization that wants them to toe the line that that organization has drawn, despite the fact that we have free speech in our country, or at least we're supposed to. Now, I mentioned the other day that Planet Fitness had uh, thrown a woman out of their gym because she complained about a man who was shaving in the women's locker room. Well, they've now lost 7% of their value, their stock value, over $400 million because of this incident. And it will probably continue. They'll probably lose more. Another article I have, Major Corruption Trial Shakes Up Ho Chi Minh City. Yes, there is corruption in communist governments, but there's obviously plenty of corruption in our government as well. So we shouldn't be pointing fingers at other people. But this article is an interesting article that explains what's been going on. There's been people in Ho Chi Minh City that have been enriching themselves in real estate that belonged to the government and somehow ended up in their ownership. And now they're starting to crack down on it. The next article I have is about the TikTok issue. And it was written by a good friend of mine. And I would like to read it to you, but I no longer have access to the Epic Times because they won't let me read their articles without paying them. And I don't pay for news. So I'll give you the link and you may be able to read it or you may be able to use an anonymous browser to read it. But uh, basically what he talks about <clears throat> is what is bad about TikTok and why our government shouldn't be the ones banning them. Just because TikTok is controlled by the Chinese Communist Party does not mean that the proper course of action is to strip Americans of their rights. That, that would be true of any country. The way the country should be approaching these problems is toward the country that is problematic, not towards their own citizens. But of course, it's much easier to suppress your own citizens than it is to deal with a foreign country. The next article I have is not actually an article, it's a podcast that Sharon, Cheryl Atkinson has, uh, or is going to publish. I don't think she's published it yet. But um, surprising news coming out of Cuba. They have rejected communism and they're turning to a capitalist economy now. Should be interesting to see as that develops what happens down there. And then finally, an article, another article of all the many articles we've had <clears throat> about uh, plagiarism at Harvard. Another Harvard racial justice scholar has been accused of plagiarism. And the evidence is pretty damning. This is written by Christopher Rufo. If you know anything about him, he's the guy that has been uncovering all the plagiarism going on. And uh, people are yelling, screaming, and you know, he's far right and all this other stuff. But the fact is that he's gotten people removed from their jobs, including the president of Harvard, because the plagiarism that they engaged in has been proven. And the really sad part is that, that Harvard has a, a rule <clears throat> that is very, deals with, with students, excuse me, deals with students who commit plagiarism very harshly. But yet they still have on their staff professors who have been accused of, of plagiarism and they've done nothing to punish them. 
the Harvard president wasn't punished. She just stepped down because it just got to be, the heat got to be too much. And so she said, better for me to leave than to let the institution suffer anymore. There were a number of other stories that I could have given you. <clears throat> um, they'll have to wait for another day because I don't want to make this overly long. But as always, I'm trying to bring you things that I think that the mainstream media is not talking about. Things that when I read them, I can see that they're well documented and they're factual. I, I avoid anything that has the, the slightest hint of political bias in it. And I'm not trying to be political in my news. I'm trying to be informative. And so I hope that you appreciate that. <clears throat> And finally, I want you to know that I pray for you every day. I pray that you will live an abundant life, that you'll be healthy and that you'll live a long time, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you'll make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.